A New Jersey executive is taking part in the International Climate Change Conference underway in Egypt. At COP27, the Conversation Center on how to reduce carbon emissions. But this year's gathering comes as Russia's invasion of Ukraine prompted countries to secure an increased production of fossil fuels. I talked to Public Service Enterprise Group's Ralph Izzo about this year's conference and what PSEG is doing on the clean energy front here in New Jersey, including investments in wind power. Great to talk to you, and I'm very interested to hear what you expect will come out of the conference this year. What goals should be set? What progress should be made? Obviously, climate change continues apace, and the need to minimize the amount of carbon emissions is greater than ever before. Regrettably, only 20 out of the roughly 180 or 200 con countries that participated last year have increased their aspirations for carbon reductions. The biggest reason for that, of course, is what's going on in Eastern Europe. The Russian invasion of Ukraine has changed energy markets drastically this year, where quite candidly, climate change is competing with the price that people are paying for their energy and the reliability and security of access to energy supply. Climate change is such a big issue in New Jersey. There have been countless studies out over the past year about how our shorelines are really um, retreating and how other areas of the state are threatened. Um, how concerned are you about what's happening here in Jersey? In addition to the effects of climate change, New Jersey is not immune to the effects of global market behavior and energy prices. And energy prices show up more than the gas pump and more than the utility bill. They show up in our food, they show up in our clothing, they show up in all sorts of products that we purchase. So we need to mitigate climate change to protect New Jersey's coast, to protect New Jersey's climate. But at the same time, we need to do it in a rational way so that we can mitigate the effect on people's bills. PSEG last summer accelerated its goals to move to carbon-free um, power in the state. Can you give us a progress report in terms of how things are progressing at PSEG? First of all, by the year 2030, we will not emit any carbon directly or indirectly from our operations. Those are known as scope one and scope two. In addition, we've sold about 7,000 megawatts of our gas plants. Now, in that case, the environment is not better off. Someone else is operating those plants, but we are no longer operating them. We are going into the Board of Public Utilities to advocate for an extension of our energy efficiency programs which is the best way to reduce carbon because at the same time that you're reducing carbon, you're reducing a customer's bill. We've also promised that by September of next year, September of 23, we will file with the United Nations Science-Based Target Initiative to reduce what we call scope three emissions. And those are the emissions that result from the suppliers who sell us their products, as well as the customers who use our electricity and natural gas. Can you tell me the role that wind will play? And I'm not sure if you can comment, but I will ask what PSEG will be considering when it decides whether or not to continue its investment in Orsted. What we'll look at from the point of view of making the investment is whether or not given the fixed price that was agreed to by Orsted, but the rising cost of building these facilities due to the inflationary pressures that we're all feeling, whether or not the difference between those two uh, allows us to earn a return that is equal to or greater than our cost of capital. And we've, we're still analyzing that at this point. Any timeline on when the decision will come? What we've told people is that it's likely to be either at the end of this year or the first quarter of next year. Ralph, it's been great chatting with you. Hope you enjoy the conference. Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Good to see you, Ron. Thanks for watching. For more clips and episodes of NJ Business Beat, subscribe to the NJ Spotlight News YouTube channel.